I seek refuge with Allah Almighty from Satan, the rejected one. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. By the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Sallallahu ta'ala ala habibihi Muhammadu wa alihi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to our segment on Surah Al-Araf. Inshallah, today we will cover the fourth ruku of Surah Al-Araf, verses 32 to 39. May Allah grant us the ability to understand the true meanings of the Quran by the grace of his Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Amin. With this dua, let's begin the fourth ruku of Surah Al-Araf. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, verse 32. Kul man harrama zinata Allah hillati akhraja li ibadihi wa tayyibati minar risk. Kul hiya lilladina amanu fil hayati ad dunya khali satan yawmal qiyamati. Kazalika nufasilul ayati lakawmin yalamun. Say, who has forbidden the adornment of Allah, which he has produced for his servants, and the good things of provision? Say, they are for those who believed during the life of this world, exclusively on the day of resurrection. Thus do we detail the signs for a people who know. In the previous verse, it was mentioned that Allah has not made adornments haram, but has disapproved of extravagance and excessiveness. Nothing is forbidden except that which Allah and his messenger, the Holy Prophet wasallam, have stated as forbidden. Tayyibat includes the necessities of life, your spouse, and children, among other things. We should use these blessings given by Allah according to our needs. That is, don't be excessive and overdo things. We should wear good clothes, eat and drink as needed, and not be so extravagant in our lifestyle. Just keep it simple. We should also spend and help the needy from what is given to us. These things are for the believers. They know that after death, they have to give an account of their actions, and based on the performance in the present life, it will lead to ease of pain in the next phase. Allah's signs are clear, but these signs can only be understood correctly by those who are endowed with the real knowledge. On the day of resurrection, we will get based on what we have done in this world. When the stay here ends, the next stage begins. Let's move on to verse 33. Kul innama harrama rabbiya al fawahisha وَذَاهَرَا مِنْهَا وَمَا بَتَانَا وَالْإِثْمَ وَالْبَغْيَا بَغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ وَأَنْ تُشْرِكُوا بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَنًا وَأَنْ تَقُولُوا أَلَى أَلَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Say, my Lord has only forbidden immoralities, what is apparent of them and what is concealed and sin and oppression without right, and that you associate with Allah, for which he has not sent down authority, and that you say about Allah that which you do not know. As far as haram is concerned, Allah has forbidden all kinds of outward and inward obscenity, sinful acts, rebellion against the truth, shirk, and saying anything about Allah, or attributing anything to Allah, which we do not know anything about. This is all forbidden. It is lawful to practice anything with a certificate from the competent authority, which is Allah and his beloved Prophet wasallam. while practicing without it is considered a crime. In Surah Al-Anam, verses 151 and 152, 
There is a description of the things that Allah has made unlawful or haram for us. There are nine things. Number one, associating partners or equals with Allah. Whether it is association in the form of a person, attributes, things, or command. Number two, not doing good to your parents. Allah is our creator, and our parents are the means for us to come into this world. Doing good to them is important, and it has been reminded in the Quran many times. Number three, killing your kids out of poverty, thinking that you would not be able to provide for them, or they would be a burden on you. Abandoning your newborns also comes in the same category. Number four, being immoral or wicked, whether it is apparent or not. If you have been immoral or sinful, then keep it to yourself. There's no need to display it in public. And don't reveal people's hidden faults to others. Number five, killing anyone except by right. Killing for sport or revenge is forbidden. The death penalty, however, is stated in the Quran. Number six, taking advantage of an orphan's property. Do not take an orphan's property unlawfully. Don't take advantage of them by taking or exchanging the expensive with the cheap. Protect their things and make sure their property is safe. If it is a business that has been left for them, the caretaker needs to make sure the business stays profitable for the orphans to take over when they are mature enough. Number seven, unfair appraisal of property. Be sure to appraise the property of other people with the fair market value and pay accordingly. Do not appraise it less than its value to take advantage. Number eight, not standing up for justice. Always speak the truth and stand up for justice. Measure actions with justice. Do not shy away to become a witness even against your loved ones if they are at fault. And number nine, not fulfilling the covenant of Allah. Violation of the covenant with Allah is forbidden. Everyone has made a covenant with Allah before coming into this world to obey only him and not to associate others with him. We need to check ourselves and see if we are within the limits of these laws and make sure we are living within these bounds. Let's move on to verse 34. وَلِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ أَجَلٌ فَاِذَا جَاءَ أَجَالُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَخِرُونَ سَعَاتًا وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ and for every nation is a term. So when their term has come, they cannot seek to delay, nor can they seek to advance. Yasta khiduna means seek to delay. Yasta demun means seek to advance. Every ummah or nation has a fixed term, and it completes. There are no delays or extensions, even for a moment, and no one can delay or extend it. In this appointed time or fixed term, those who live according to the orders of Allah are successful, while those who neglect the orders are led to sorrow and troubles in the next stage. This is also mentioned in Surah Hud, verse 3 where Allah says, And seek forgiveness of your Lord and repent to him. He will let you enjoy a good provision for a specified term and give every doer of favor his favor. But if you turn away, then indeed, I fear for you the punishment of a great day. Let's go on to verse 35. Ya bani Adama, imma ya tiyannakum rusulum minkum. يَقْسُونَ عَلَيْكُمْ أَيَاتِي فَمَا نِتَّقَى وَأَسْلَهَا فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَعْزَنُونَ 
O children of Adam, if there come to you messengers from among you, relating to you my signs, then whoever fears Allah and reforms, there will be no fear concerning them, nor will they grieve. Allah did not just create us, the children of Adam, and forget about us. Rather, he has designed a comprehensive system of guidance for us. Sending of the messengers and prophets is a part of the system. They came, they did their job, and they left. Their purpose was to remind people about Allah, the real Lord, while we have the time and raise awareness about a real purpose of creation and train us to attain that purpose. Those who believe the words of the ones sent by Allah live their lives according to the message delivered to them, and by their good deeds, their lives become a cradle of peace and tranquility. Allah removes fear and sorrow from them, and they are the friends of Allah. Friends of Allah are also mentioned in Surah Yunus, verse 62, where it says, Unquestionably, the friends of Allah, there will be no fear concerning them, nor will they grieve. Let's go on to verse 36. وَالَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِأَيَاتِنَا وَاسْتَقْبَلُوا أَنْ هَا أُولَائِكَ أَسْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ And the ones who deny our signs and are arrogant toward them, those are the companions of the fire. They will abide therein eternally. As for those who do not believe in the messengers of Allah, and arrogantly deny his signs, their end is the fire of fear and sorrow, and they will have to suffer the end of what they did. In Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 39 and verse 82, it talks about the end of those who reject the message of Allah and those who believe in it, where it says, And those who deny and reject the signs, those are the companions of hell, they will remain in it. And those who believe and continue to do righteous deeds, these are the companions of Jannah. They will continue to live therein. Jannah is the name of comfort and peace. And Jahannam, or hell, is the name of pain and suffering. Let's go on to verse 37. فَمَنْ أَدْلَامُ مِمَّانِ أَفْتَرَى Allah <laughs> أن وشاهدوا على أنفسهم أنهم كانوا كافرين. And who is more wrong than one who invents about Allah a lie or denies His signs? Those will attain their portion of the book until when our messengers come to them to take them in death. They will say, Where are those you used to invoke besides Allah? They will say, they strayed from us and will bear witness against themselves that they were disbelievers. Dhalu means strayed, to move away aimlessly from the right course or place. It is wrong to invent something and blame it on Allah and to deny the signs of Allah. Such people are punished for their deeds. And at the time of death, when the angels come to take their lives, they ask them about those whom they used to worship and rely on except Allah. Where are they now? And why did they not save them from death? These people have no answer to this question, other than regret. They come to know the reality and testify against themselves that they were in denial. Let's go on to verse 38. Qala Adhulufi Amamin Kad Khalat Minikablikum Minal Jinni 
والإنس في النار كلما دخلت أما طلا أنت أختها حتى إذا أدى الركم فيها جميعا قالت أخرهم لأولاهم ربنا هؤلاء أذالوا نافاتهم أذابا ذيفا من النار قال لكل ذيف ولا كل تعلمون He will say Enter among nations which had passed on before you of jinn and mankind into the fire. Every time a nation enters, it will curse its sister until when they have overtaken one another therein. The last of them will say about the first of them, Our Lord, they had misled us, so give them a double punishment of the fire. He will say, For each is double, but you do not know. Akhtaha means its sister, or someone like them. Adarakum means they have overtaken. Such deniers are thrown into the fire with people like them, and they are always blaming each other for what happened to them. We carry our own burdens, and also for others when we mislead them. This is also mentioned in Surah Al-Nahl, verse 25, where it says that they may bear their own burdens in full on the day of resurrection and some of the burdens of those whom they misguide without knowledge. Unquestionably, evil is that which they bear. Let's go on to verse 39. فَقَالَتْ أُولَاهُمْ لِأُخْرَهُمْ فَمَا كَانَ لَكُمْ عَلَيْنَا مِنْ فَضْلٍ فَذُوكُوا الْأَذَابَ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْسِبُونَ And the first of them will say to the last of them, Then you had not any favor over us, so taste the punishment for what you used to earn. The first of them say to the last of them, You are not better than us. You have done the same as we have. They are all the same in their low ranks. It is said to all of them that they reap what they have sown. As stated in Surah Saba, verse 42, But today you do not hold for one another benefit or harm. And we will say to those who wronged, Taste the punishment of the fire, which you used to deny. This concludes our segment on Ruku 4 of Surah al araf Let's briefly go over what we discussed. According to the law of Allah, fear and sorrow are removed from those who accept the message of truth and do righteous deeds, while those who deny it and oppose the truth go into the fire of fear, grief, and sorrow. And especially those who commit shirk and invent things on their own behalf, and blame Allah, the exalted, they will suffer a severe punishment. May Allah grant us the ability to understand the Holy Quran and its true meanings in light of the life and guidance of Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ameen. Thank you for joining us for this segment. Until next time. Sadaqullah al Allah speaks truth, the exalted, the great. Sallallahu ta'ala ala habibihi Muhammadin wa alihi wa sallam.